Desiree Talk Show, and we're here in Pritchett, Alabama. We're on 45. We're here at Fry Daddy's, and if you can see the balloons, this is a, a man that has helped so much in the community. I just wanted to show you his place of business because everybody knows Fry Daddy. But uh, we're going to interview some people. I even got uh, his brother up here. There are a lot of people up here that care about Fry Daddy, and uh, he has uh, he's passed away. But uh, that's okay. We're going to keep him. We're going to keep him alive spiritually because he's done so many good things. And we're going to let some people tell you about Mr. Fry Daddy. Jazz Red, we love you. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show, and we're up here in front of uh, Fry Daddies. And this is a young man that want to say something about uh, Fry Daddy. What's your name? Jermaine Doolittle. Get that, back. Get that mic. Tell them something about Fry Daddy. How you doing? This is Jermaine Doolittle, also known as DJ Main D. Look me up on Facebook. Um... Well, I want to say the community has lost a great man. If, if you didn't know this man, then you, you truly missed a blessing. When I say this man to give you his last, he just genuinely had a good heart. So you got some people out here that, that they, they, they be evil, they hateful, but this man ain't possess none of them traits. He will give you his last. And the way he died, he was doing a noble act, just risking his life for an animal. Some of these people only risk their life for another human being. This man risked his life for an animal. So that tells you what type of person he was. And, um... Man, I, I'm hurt by it. I'm just uh, I'm I'm deeply hurt and it's it's sad, man. We we really lost. He's been a long time friend of mine. He's a twin. I'm a twin, and we grew up in the same neighborhood, same neighborhood, and went to high school together. He was very academically smart, um, athletic. Him and his brother Don Don and Daniel Hunter, they they were good boys. They they lost their mom some years ago. That was that was a hurtful. That was hurt for them, and uh, I hurt for them, and uh, now I lost a friend. So, but uh, we're gonna keep the legacy. Alive on Hill we 45. We gonna, gonna, as you can see, they gonna know about it. this is place of business. He was he was better known in the city as Friday, is, but we gonna we gonna keep his legacy alive. We are gonna pay honor tribute every year the same way we and did for Hawaii. We need we need to get with Troy even. We need a Friday today because he been helping kids, man. We need yeah, he been helping kids. He did so much for Hawaii Robinson, and we was just had some stuff coming up that he was gonna do for Hawaii Robinson tribute for her. But just unfortunately, we had an untimely death. So um, but we gonna keep it going. We're going right, to keep it going. I'm going to thank you, and uh, you keep your friend alive. I like that. You see what I'm saying? See, because old school, we always care about people. Sometimes I be thinking, y'all, young folk don't care. Yeah. I don't be want to come out the house half yeah. the time. But I done found somebody and energized Jazz back up, and uh, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, I want to commend you thank for you. being a friend and for saying something for your friend. Yeah. So you keep him alive, okay? okay. All right. Tell him, uh, tell him God bless you. Tell peace out. God bless. Peace out, Mandy. Jazz Red Talk Show. And uh, I know y'all looking, because let me tell you, when I seen this young man, I did not know that Friday had, had a twin. When I walked up, I was like, I'm finna shake that. They lied, but it, this is brother. This is twin brother. What's your name? I'm Danell Hunter. And and you look so much like him. He We always got him now, because he looked just like him. Uh, we loved your brother. I want to tell you what your brother did. Jazz Red had a father that died that worked with me at the shipyard, and we were taking up some money to get his kids some school clothes, okay? And uh, I called Friday, and Friday told me to come right up here, and I put it on my show. I said, I'm bringing my camera. I filmed your brother uh, giving me some money to help these kids, and, and he's just awesome. I mean, he's on my YouTube. A lot of times when people film, it keep them alive. I got him on the YouTube at the, the bike giveaway in Pritchard. He was cooking, and uh, he had his friend here. We're going to interview his friend. He had his best friend up here. And uh, I just want you to know, you and your family know that how much that man is loved. And Pre Pritchard got a loss, man. The whole world got a loss. But we love you. If you need me, you call me. And this is just it. I mean, for anything, you need a ride somewhere, you call me. Because you got an angel going to watch you, and it's, it's Friday. You understand? By him doing some good things, he done left some good stuff for you. Okay? Now, I want you to tell my viewers a little something about your brother. Because some of them didn't even know he had passed. Man, tell them about your brother. Um, my twin brother, um, we was born and raised um, on Clark Street uh, in Queen Court Projects. Uh, Fortunately, um, uh, growing up there, my, my mom um, was a very Christian woman, and we was in church. And uh, one day, uh, we were so excited, uh, we had finally moved out of the 
the projects, uh, people would say court, it wasn't big enough to be a project, and uh, we moved over to Bob Viger, and um, we would, um, it was tennis star for Scarborough, and then the school bus would drop us out right in front of the Queen Court project. Oh, you kidding, Queen Court? Right, and, yeah. uh, and after we moved, we were so excited, because we had finally moved out the projects, and we moved by Viger, but we were still being dropped off at Queen Courts. <laughs> so, we would, uh, so we would, so we would, um, the bus from Scarborough dropped us off at Queen Court, so we would go to that the building where my brother uh, have, and as little kids, we would buy penny candy because it was a washer and it had a convenience store in the back. Okay. And we'll put the, uh, the my mom gave us money to um, uh, catch the bus. Okay. I think it was about a quarter, fifty cent back then. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we would um, buy some penny candy from the washer terrier, put the candy in our book bag, and run home. Um, so. Uh, I say that to say this right here. We went on the Viger High School, and I think that was helped us uh, became pretty good popular basketball players and okay. kept us in shape. And uh, Coach Ladd was the basketball coach, and we ran cross country. Yeah. And uh, we got a scholarship to Xavier University. Um, oh, really? We ran cross country, and we got an academic scholarship. And um, Dawn majored in psychology pre-med, and I was a biology pre-med student. Yeah, And... We uh, did very good, and we started a, a numerous of business in New Orleans. Okay. And my sister um, uh, saw a building out in Mobile, and uh, that was the very first Friday. Okay. It was in Mobile. It was a little small building. Yeah. And Don said he was going to Mobile to open up a business, but he was going to stay in New Orleans. Okay. And six months he was down here, Katrina came. Oh, wow. And... Um, he was unable to come back to New Orleans because New Orleans was destroyed. It was destroyed. And from that point, he decided to move to Mobile. Okay. Uh, this building came available. My little nephew found out about it. Um, and this building right here came available. And he eventually had the Friday at Mobile and had the Friday at here. Okay. Friday and it, at Mobile and here. Right. So he eventually moved everything from uh, Mobile to Pritchard. And um, one of the amazing things that I can say of this right here is that um, which all the time, you know, you hear in the black community that we have people that are successful that don't give back. Well, that wasn't the case with him. He was successful and he gave back. He always gave back. He was successful and he decided not to leave this community. Okay. He decided to stay. I begged him numerous of times, man, you don't have to stay here. He said, man, I want to stay around my people. I want to stay around. He didn't have to live here in Pritchard. You know. He wanted to. He stay. wanted to stay here yeah. because he he had a heart for people. And he's just like me. We love kids. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, one of the very first business that we started in. See, people didn't understand. It. One of the very first business that we started uh, was Friends Foundation. That was the very first business we started in college. Uh, it was one day we was uh, sitting down in the dormitory room. And we had a bunch of guys that were pre-med students. And they were sitting down. Like, man, when I become a doctor one day, I'm going to build this community center for the kids. Yeah. We're going to build this gym. We're like, yeah, man, when I become a millionaire, I'm going to do all this. for. <laughs> and... Um, me and my brother went back to our dormitory room, and we sat down, and we looked at each other, and we said, man. Don looked at me and said, man, why we got to wait till we become millionaires yeah. to give back? Oh, man. And that day, Friends Foundation was born. Oh, my grace. And we would, while we was in college, struggling college students, we were feeding the homeless, clothing the homeless. Yeah. Because we said, why do we have to get rich That's right. before we can give back to our community? You know, I hear that a lot. They say, this is what they would tell Jazzy. People would say, Jazz Red, I want to get out and help too when I get rich. I say, if you poor and you ain't got nothing, you ain't helping nobody. When you get money, you're going to help yourself. That's who you've been helping. Right. But you're right. Y'all came up with it. Right. You came up with it. God. And, and um, I wanted to, one of the things that, you know, you, uh, my mom always, one of the most powerful things you can have is faith. That's right. And everybody said, well, I, I want the money. And uh, um, and, it, and a lot of people was amazed by how Donnell was able to do what he was doing in the community simply because he had faith. He came from nothing, but he had faith. Yeah, he had and, and one And one of the things that I want people to know is that we came from Queen Court Project. And for him to buy that building. Mm hmm I mean, buy the building that we used to buy Penny Candy from. Bro, the, oh, man, that's an awesome story. It is an accomplishment, you know. God. Yeah, it's definitely an accomplishment. Oh, you know? man, it was it was for you. So as God little kids. made that path off for yeah, you. Yeah, as little kids, people were wondering, like, you know, they from Queen Court. They're not going to be anything, you know. 
And my mom was a woman of faith. Oh, man. She believed in God. Yes. And uh, we might didn't have much, but we had a lot of faith. <laughs> yeah. And that's all you need. That's all you need. That's, I tell that's you. All, Go that's all you faith. Need. Just that's step all you out. Need. Step out. So, um, uh, what, you know, he, he would, you know, my thing is that um, we want people to uh, remember him. Uh, I would definitely not, you know, my brother would talk to me all the time. And the last time we had a conversation, he was like, like, Don, what you doing? Because um, I knew something was wrong that night. Because we normally talk on the phone like clockwork. He'll call me about 2 o'clock mm-hmm. every morning. And we just, you know, we, a lot of people would think, you know, especially when we was in college growing up, and they thought we were Siamese twins, you know what I mean? <laughs> we did everything yeah, together. Y'all, oh, yeah. y'all did everything together. Everything together. Usually <laughs> twins and sisters be fighting. Me and oh, man yeah. don't get along. We know well, twins. Well, but, yeah. but y'all get, y'all, y'all were together. Oh, we were, you know, yeah. as little kids, we, we'll get in the fight. <laughs> we'll, we'll get in the fight and we'll, um, We'd be loving and hugging each other and next hugging each other Oh, yeah, we, we couldn't be mad at each other. Oh, you know, wow. It was just that, that, that bond, that love we had for each other. Just, oh, my grace. Yeah, so. So you, but you got some precious memories of right. your brother, and you're a very strong brother, okay. and I hope you're going to keep doing what you're doing. I know you are. You ain't going to let up. You right. ain't going to let up. No, it's going to be hard, but you're going to carry it on. Right. You're going to carry it on. And we just want Friday at his customers to know that um, – he loved his customers. I know he did. Oh man, he loved his customers, and he was um, he, he just wasn't a businessman in the community. He is a businessman that had a vision. He's a businessman that had his purpose. That's right. And he wanted us in the black community to understand the importance of supporting black businesses. That's what I'm talking about. Because we have, you know, and, and we have other nationalities in our communities to take all our wealth. I know. And don't give us a penny back. Nothing. You, you know, don't pay for everything you get up. You don't pay for everything. And uh, it's time for us as black people to wake up. We got to wake up. To wake up and, and, and start supporting each other. Uh, uh, start becoming entrepreneurs. And, and, and just to be honest with you, we need to take our neighborhood back. You're right. We need to take our neighborhood back. You know, we, we, are, we are too smart of a people. We're too educated of people to allow some of the things that's happening in our communities that's happening. You know, it's a shame. You know, we, we're, we are intelligent people. Um, we are. We're smart people. We're resilient. Everybody got a talent. And what are we going to do? You know, we instead of being separated, somebody. we need to come together and make some things happen. You know, it's just that simple. That's just so, what I've been trying. Whenever whenever you, uh, I know you got a lot of business to handle, you know, and he just passed, but uh, I'm going to give you a card. I, I want to call you anyway. I can work with you. We're trying right. to help to get our people together. We got to right. get back together. The killing, the merciless, all of that got to go away. Right. It's got to go away. So uh, I'm going to give you a card and you call me whenever you get straight and uh, we can do phone interviews and right. whatever you want to do. I want to I want to stay close to you. And, and one of my things I want to say that uh, Friday isn't going anywhere, you know. I'm his twin brother. We have the same heart. So I'm here now. That's right. You know, so That's I'm right. here to, to uh, live out his legacy uh, to make sure that uh, you know, the last conversation I had with my brother, and I was like, "Don, what's going on?" He's like, "Man, I'm a, uh, I, I want to be the first billionaire in Pritchard, you know." And he had a dream and a vision. Oh no! Oh, he was on. He was on. He was. He was definitely. I know. We and, would uh, sit and talk. He was a oh, yeah. businessman. Oh, yeah. I was a business. You know, very you smart. Sit and talk with him. We talk business. He's, right. he's a very good person, man. And one thing, he, you know, he's just like me. We really love children. I know, kids. We love children, <laughs> we, and, and we know, even though Don and I don't have any children, I don't have any children, but we know the importance of. Of raising children the right way, okay. you know, right. and uh, his thing is that the earlier we can catch them, the better off they are. That, that's right. That's so, right. Uh, that's right. That's right. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. You really enlighten. He's enlightening us on a lot about his brother. But we're gonna stay close with him. You're gonna call me if you need him. I want you to tell them something. Tell them to help. And and we're gonna do a peace out because there's some other people up here. It's a lot of people up here, ladies and gentlemen. They want to say something, and you'll be able to. Uh, I'll get you a copy of this. I'll put it on YouTube. We're gonna. I want you to know about your brother. He has helped so many people. I brought a lady up here that he fed, and I'm gonna let her tell that. Okay, So cool. tell them, tell them a little something. And we're gonna do a peace well, out. Well, we we haven't decided where we're gonna have the uh, the funeral yet, but we we're making arrangements and. We will let you know uh, when we make those arrangements. Okay. Uh, they doing something for Harata Robertson and Donnell Hunter. Most people know him as Fry Daddy. Friday. At the Food for Less Wednesday uh, in Whistler okay. uh, at 7 o'clock. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be uh, like a visual memorial for uh, Donnell and Harata uh, Robertson. Tell them again when that is because Jazz Red work at night, but they gonna come be, out. It's going to be Wednesday uh, at the Food for Less uh-huh. in Whistler. In Whistler. In the, um, 
At 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock. Okay. I want you to tell them God bless you. Tell them God bless you. God bless you. Red Talk Show, I wanted to... uh, I want y'all to see this young man, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, when he was running for office, this young man was on my show, and I remember you telling me about Friday and that he helped you. Uh, and every time I'd see him, I'd see you. Uh, we were at the Christmas bike giveaway. You were there. I said, where is his best friend? I know he hurting. I'm, I want you to tell him your name. What's your name? Rashid Shuford. I want you to tell them something you know about your good friend Friday. Here, hold that mic, young man. Tell him. I don't know where to start. I mean, uh, it was the best person I probably ever met on this planet. Uh, he always gave from the heart. He gave you the shirt off his back. Uh, he helped me out, you know, when uh, we first became real close. Uh, I lost my house, uh, wife, everything. And uh, he offered me a place to stay, actually. And uh, gave me a job, helped me get back on my feet, uh, bought me a car, uh, all that. And uh, from then on, we always, you know, was close, uh, like a brother to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, he give away, uh, feed everybody, sure uh, give my kids school clothes, uh, just, you know, it's just... There's no words to describe. I can't really even describe them in words. You know, what he meant to me, this city, the community. We used to go around and he used to go to elderly people's houses and cut oh their grass. God. Oh, my grace. Uh, give kids money, uh, jobs, clothes. Uh, people was on the street. He'd give them a place to stay. I mean. Your friend did a lot of good, baby. Friday did a lot of good. But you know what they did? He passed that torch on to you. You know that, don't you? Yeah. He passed that torch on to you. So you got to keep going. You know you got to keep going. He going to hand that torch over to you. So we're going to be, uh, I'm going to call you. We're going to interview you a little later on. You're going to be doing some great things. In community. You're going to keep doing it. It's just down right now, but you're going to keep going. He wants you to do that. You know that, don't you? He wants you to keep going. Yeah, man, that's a hard I know, baby. I know uh, you is. It's hard shoes to try to fill. You yeah, know? I know. I mean, it's he can never be replaced. You know, his him not being here no more is him not being here no more. This it's, it's a definite deficit to the to my family, uh, to the city. I mean, to everybody, to everybody that he touched and everybody that knew him. You know. But you're gonna you go. You gotta keep going. You got to keep going. You know that, don't you? For your family, for them, and for Friday. All right? You're going to call me if y'all need me for anything. Any way I can help, I'm going to try. But y'all going to do it. You're going to keep doing it. You got his brother. You got his brother now. All right. I want you to tell him. Tell him God bless you. Because okay. I know you love him. I know his. this is his friend. I know that you was his friend. Tell him. Tell him God bless you. Rest in peace, Don. Jazz Red Talk Show. And uh, if y'all know my graphic. Design guy Woodrow, this is his uh, fiance here. Okay, but she she gonna tell you something. Now, now Barbara's the one that told me about his chicken and told me to come up here. But she's gonna tell his brother something that he did. Talking to Mike. Sister. Okay, I would like to say that I always have called him Hannah. Hannah was a good man. When I went to him and I asked him, I said, would you give me a job? He told me, he said, I think you can't do it because you was too short and because you was not going to be able to pick those boxes up. But when I said, Hunter, I said, I'm hungry. I don't care who knows. Hunter said, no, you can't walk out of here hungry. He said, I'm going to feed you, and plus I'm going to let you do some work in here. And um, he also said, we're going to find somewhere for to get you out this street and where you can have somewhere to go. And he did, and he do that. And I also would like to tell each and every one that what they are uh, also um, – Send a card of flowers and show their appreciation what Connor has did for this country. He was a very good man, and he he was well liked by the community. He would help anyone. He even though helped my mother one time when she was alive. No, don't cry. Okay. All right, y'all see what we're going through up here. <laughs>
Uh, she was there when they uh, brought him out to her. Uh, we got to we gotta cut it off a minute, y'all. Y'all see what we going through. All right, we hold that. Hold, hold that a minute. Uh, let me cut it off. I'm going to leave it on there. I want them to... Jazz Red Talk Show, and we we calling this show Friday the show. I wanna, I want y'all to see all the brothers. I didn't know he had other brothers. I didn't know it was a twin. When I walked up, I said, "He here, that." But they, you told him your name. Tell him your name. Danielle Hunter, Winston Hunter, Wendell Hunter, Dominique Hunter. Oh yeah, look alike. Yeah. Oh yeah, look alike. Handsome young men, and they're gonna they're gonna keep that legacy, right? Y'all gonna keep that legacy going. Going on. That's what we're up. we're not gonna let up. Okay. We're doing this for, for dad. I mean, we're doing this for our daddy, okay. and uh, we got him in our hearts. We're gonna continue the legacy for him. Okay. 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 Who is this young man that walked up there? Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We finna whoop the camera over here. This is this is his father here. Uh, Ivy, look at that boy. You know all your boys looking like. Ain't no way, look, ain't no way you could have went to no child support coat, baby. They look just like you, every one of them. You you know how much folks love him. You see this, don't you? Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Winston Thomas. Well, I be dog. Look at that. Look just like him. I mean, all your all your sons. I know you're proud of them. Yes, ma'am. Every one of them. Yes, ma'am. All right, and they going they gonna to keep going, and you look just like they're him. Gonna and going. They're gonna We're not going to stop. You're not going to stop. No, all right, all right. Who is that on the end over there? That's my grandson. That's a grandson. Who baby that is? That's your that's your little brother though. Look, nephew, y'all tell me who that is before I put the camera on him here. Huh? All right, what's your name? My name John. They call me Boo. Boo? Yeah. Tell us something about Friday today. Well, I grew up with them, you know. These like they my uncle, but they like my brothers though, you know. And it's hard though to deal with this right now, but it's okay. Yeah. Everybody love it, baby. A wonderful man, like just the spirit, like in and out, like. That's right. He always says something positive to you to uplift your spirit, and like just a beautiful spirit, like. You, you got to keep going. And you gonna do it? It's rare that like, you meet people like that every day, and. It is. But you gotta keep, you, you gotta help too, though. You gotta get out and help. He passed the torch on all y'all. Yes, you gotta keep going. You understand? Yes, I know you're hurting, but you are gonna keep going. Yes, and you see everybody out here, and we love him. Yes, all y'all, we love him, man. This dude yes, bought school code for children out in Mississippi. They dad had died. I came up here and picked it up and sent it to Western Union. Yes, so everybody got a good story to tell about him. You understand? Yeah, all right. I go on all day, but he know. Okay. And I know what he did for me and others. So. Okay. All right. I just want to keep his legacy alive. We're going to do that, and that's what we're going to do. And uh, Jazz Red, we're going to interview some other people. It's a uh, preacher lady here want to tell that he bought some chicken for a church. So y'all y'all covered in the blood, man. Everybody love y'all. Y'all need a ride or whatever. Y'all got it. Preacher in Mobile, too. Jazz Red. Jazz Red talk show. And uh, we've got a, I call him preacher lady. This lady here yeah, want to tell you, what's your name, Red? Pastor Lily Man Corella. Hold that microphone and tell him what you know about. Tell him what you, what he do. I'm Pastor Lily Man Corella from my father's house of prayer. Don loved people and children. I had something called Wednesday Night Live. Well, I have the children up there on Wednesday night, and we do various activities with them, and we also minister to them to keep them out of the street. He would come up there every now and then on Wednesday and bring some chicken so we could feed the kids before they go home. My pastor appreciation was this week. It started Wednesday, and it climaxed Saturday. Don was one of the vendors that Thursday night he fed all the members and everybody that came to the pastor appreciation Thursday night prior to him departing from here. Yeah, dog. Did y'all hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Y'all see what Jazz ran up on? This wasn't set up. I was passing by. This wasn't set up. Y'all see that? That man ain't did nothing but him. Nothing but he him. He did nothing but him. And everybody else, they, they, well, we passing his spirit through the screen now. Yes. I want you to tell and him, you, you tell him, tell him you love his family. Tell him about you. All very, we love his family very much. We love Don very much. 
When Dunn came in Friday night, I allowed him to meet my pastor. He had not met him. But I, I told the congregation this. I say Dunn did the two things that he loved before he left here. I say he set foot back in the house of the Lord because he loved God and he loved ministry. I say, and then he still was doing an act of service, which he do for the whole neighborhood. There are so many people that Dunn has did stuff for, and he did not tell he did. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't tell anybody a lot of things that he was done doing. He said, if he do things in secret, that God will reward him openly. That was his attitude. He loved children. He used to come up there on Wednesday night, and he would minister to my children up there. He would talk to them, and he would tell them about they need to do their homework. They got to get in school. They got to do their best because they need that to go anywhere. He was very concerned about the children academics and them being able to make A's and B's in school and knowing how to read. He was very concerned about the neighborhood kids and our black kids as a race. Okay. I don't want, I don't want you to Break down on me too. You know, some folks up here love him so much. To if I let them talk too long, they just go to crying. You know, so. Uh, but that's all right. You're gonna keep helping with the kids, and you're gonna keep yes, doing what you're doing. Yes. All right, all right. Everybody up here grieving just a little bit. Tell them, tell them, God bless you. God bless you, and continue to pray for the family and keep them lifted up because they need you at this moment. And. Jazz Red Talk Show, and uh, I'm your host, Jazz Red. I want to I wanna introduce y'all to a man. Uh, we call him Sam at the shipyard, but I'm going to tell you, uh, last week, Peggy Scott Adams' birthday, I, because at that time, I had just my 82 Chevy Diamond in the back. This man here, uh, we've been buddies a long time. He let me use his van to go to Florida and film Peggy Scott Adams, which stemmed me being able to get all the blues people, Sam. It introduced me to so many people. But I know you had a, always had a good heart. You remember Thanksgiving, you said, I'm going to go take Red something because Red ain't got nothing to eat. I, wa I wasn't. I was at home and I had nothing. And he, kno he knocked at my door and brought me something to eat. Man, how am I going to forget about that? You fed me. I'm like a puppy. You can't, I'm going to hold on to you now. I, uh, I, I didn't... You, Tell them your name and you some kin Sam. to Cochran. Sam Cochran. You some kin to Oh yeah, they they're my kin folks. I never knew that. Oh, Red, I don't see how you how could you I, not know because blood is blood. I, well I know you give, but I didn't know you were some kin to Friday. Hey, Red, you realize that he he or the type of man that tried to do things to help people. You look at my background. Go back. Red, I always from day one, try to help somebody. Yeah, you would. Feed them. I'll feed them when you're hungry. If you're a stranger, I'll try to help you find you somewhere in the state. If you needed a ride, I'll give you a ride to the shipyard. Sure you know, sure I would do that. Yeah. But let me let me let me take this mic from Red here. All right, he let, me tell, let me tell let me tell you about Diamond Red. Now, Red, 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 Red been my friend for many years. I'm talking about a true friend. And when you when when you got run across a true friend on, uh, and they they hungry. You got to feed them. You got to do something to help them because that's what love is all about. And that way uh, everybody in this whole world need to be showing more love and instead of fighting one another. They need to be showing one love. I don't care whether you're in Pasadena, Mississippi, or wherever you may be. Love is what lifts one another. Love is keeping us going right here today. I want to tell y'all something about my cousin here. He always had love for one for another. All my cousins like that, my mama, my family, we, we if, if you know one, you have known all of us because all of us about love and trying to help one another because we look back over our lives when we didn't have it. And we, we, we were struggling and trying to have something. My mama did this here and did that, worked, and worked, worked from night to day to try to see to us have it. And that's the way we is. We come up working. And the only way we know how to do it is work to try to have something. Because let me tell you something in the world. If you try to get anything, you won't get, try to get it free, let me tell you, it don't come easy. I tell you the best thing for you to do is work. How long you been with? I've been, I've been I've, I'm, I'm a ship, I'm, I'm ship fit. I've been fitting for 40 years. And not only do I shift it, baby, I could do anything that God put God God allow me to do. I remodel houses. I do brick mason. I, I do plumbing. I do a little bit of everything. I build fences. But God, if you put yourself forward and do what you need to do, God gonna give you what you asked Him for. But you got you got you can't sit around the house and lay in the bed and they expect God to give it to you. You got to get out there and get it. And that's 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 the way my cousin was. He got out and worked and tried to help somebody. Boy, let me tell you something. 
If you can't help nobody, don't put them down. Because the same one that you be putting down, them be the one that will pick you up when you're down. And, 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 I'm, and I'm telling you, it do happen that way, Red. Happen that way. Now, I'm going to tell you, Sam Cochran been helping a lot of people down there in the shipyard. And uh, I didn't know, I did not know that that was your kin people, your Kenya. But Mobile is small and Pritchard is small. So it pays to be good people. You know that. It pays it to pays. treat everybody right. Tell them God bless you. God bless you. And keep you that our prayer and keep looking forward. Don't let nobody knock you down. If you get knocked down, get up, shake it off. And say that, that rejoice day that the Lord has made. And by all means, stand. Stand, stand. Jazz Red Talk Show. And uh I wanted to uh just stay there, sister. I wanted to scan a minute. I mean the people are up here and they are really just they're just out here, man, and, and they're showing a little love for uh, Fry Daddy. You know, everybody got love for him. But this is want to say a little something about uh, about Mr. Hunter, Fry Daddy. Tell him your name. Good evening. This is Michonne Hunter. This is Don, all his sister. And I just want to tell y'all that my brother, I talked to him. I came here about two weeks ago. I just want to tell you, I had applied for my baby's scholarship fund. It didn't go through. And I can tell the people, y'all, these schools that you put your children in, make sure, was, was, and go check out your children at school. And I asked my brother, I said, Lord, I get a once a month income. I said, but I'm stepping out on faith, Lord, to put my baby somewhere, that he'll get a good education. And I asked Don, I said, Lord, I'm going to pay my bill money out for his registry. I said, will you give me, uh, help me? He said, yeah, don't you ever be over there and you and this baby need anything. And yeah. I can help you. So about two weeks ago, my church member brought me up to Fry Daddy up here. Mm -hmm. No, to the building down down the street. Okay. And we just caught him because he's a busy man. You can't hardly catch him. And I said, Lord, we just caught you for the go. And I said, Well, I came down for the get that package which you had told me to come up here to get. He said, Well, how much you need? And I told him. And my brother, he was so sharp. I said, He had on a black shirt and black slack and a black hat. I said, Where is you going? He said, I got some business tender. I said, oh, you sure you ain't got a daddy? You know how his smile is. <laughs> he is going to be very missed. Yes. He loved everyone. And I didn't know that he did all of this. I'm just learning that he did all this. And, and that's what we do. We're supposed to help one another, love one another. You know, you may not even know nobody, but you're still supposed to help if you got it. That's what God wants us to do, love one another. You his sister. And help one another. You his oldest sister. And God, we just thank you for him. He missed it. It hurt me. I don't cry, I don't cry, I don't shout, I don't cry. They said, well, you're the oldest one. You're supposed to be, I know I'm the oldest one, but it's hurt. That's my brother. And I have a re right degree over my brother. That's my brother. And, Lord, I just thank God for him being with us. It just hurt to see. And, Lord, if I just could see him just walk around. And many hours of the night, he builds up in this restaurant. Yeah. One night, so, night we talk on the phone. He said, Michelle, I just can't, like, I can't get nobody to work in this restaurant. Every time you look around, they're still around. I said, well, baby, what you got to do? We're going to pray that God send you somebody. You got to ask the Lord to send you somebody in faith. And you know what? We came, was here. When I heard about it, we stayed out here all night. And I want to tell anybody, my brother had passed. And this person came into my brother building, broke my in my brother building. What kind of heart do you have? Wait a minute. A person that help you like that, and you come and take what from my brother? They, somebody God, broke in that building. God. Okay. God see everything. And I just want to tell y'all, keep y'all children, put them up in the blood. Don't send your children to church. Go to church with them. See that? Because we need this That's in these right. evil days. Right. And we all blacks need to come together. Stop oh, pulling down the crab our business. Like crab after pulling down the bastard, Lord Jesus. After he dies, somebody's going to break in the business. In you don't the don't name of for, Jesus. You don't do that for somebody to help. Oh, you don't break in his building and all he do is help. Yeah. You ought to bring it back or give it back if you got anything. God going to whoop you for that. That ain't right. And, Lord, just keep us in prayer. We need prayer. It's hurting. I'm going to apologize. It's hurting. It's hurting. We I'm need apologize. prayer, Jesus. That made me mad. I'm going to apologize. Yes, Lord. Folk, folks, help, and then you're going to break in his place when he dies. All right. You're going to pay for that. And I want to tell my family, Lord, every time now we need to get together, love one another, help one another. Not only helping family, help people outside. I meet people every day. I don't have a whole lot, but I'm willing to help somebody. Because God, that's what he wants us to do to help. His niece and nephew, he want to see the best for y'all. Go to school. Get your lesson. Not only my niece and nephew, other children out here. I don't pray for just my children, my family. I pray for everybody all over the world. That's what God wants us to do. 
Support one another. Don't pull a, one of us, a black pulling one down like crabs in a basket. That's bad. That's bad. And Lord, I just want to thank you for me being. I, I just got a little strength today. I've been down and out. It's hurting. It's hurting. But I thank God it. for strengthening me. You gonna make? Cause it. He's a good God. He said He'll never let us down. We make. might let Him down, but He ain't gonna never let us down. And I have the faith that He's gonna bring this family up stronger, and That's that right. my brother's legacy would still go out helping one another. That God. we still God. go helping out somebody, somebody's children. Somebody, somebody hungry, need. Amen. That's what we need to do. Help one, love one yeah, another. Get right. up on the blood. God showing you signs of the days now that we need to be closer to the Lord and teach our children. Tell them about the Lord. Baby's coming up. And Lord, I just thank you today for this, Lord Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A woman Glory. of God. A woman of God. A woman of God. Y'all got to cut that out, man. Folk die, and then you go break in their building. Y'all got to cut that out, man. I couldn't have seen that, and they ain't do something. That wasn't right. What, you on drugs or something? You don't do that to somebody that be helping. Well, y'all done broke Jazz down with that. We going to say Jazz Red. And we going to end this on his building here. And uh, his nephew over there crying, but we going to end this on that. Jazz Red, we love you. Come here, give me his name again. Sam, what is what is I want name? you to do? It. Come here, give me his name. Don, we give me his name, sister. Donnell Hunter. All in pride, Daddy. We love you, Jazz Red. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show, and uh, I'm your host, Jazz Red. And uh, we've got some important dignitaries here. <laughs> Y'all know how I do it. It's taking care on Jazz Red Show. I have to film, edit, and produce, run the camera, and everything. I'm, I'm loving it. I've been, we've been on uh, October. We'll be on six years. Uh, um, tell them your name. They seen you two weeks ago. Tell them your yeah. name. Uh, I'm Demetrius Simeon. I'm a professor of sociology, criminology at Spring Hill College. Okay. And uh, you got uh, another important dignitary over here. What's your name? My name is Gwendolyn Doherty. I work at the Center for Fair Housing, and I'm also the chair for the seminar that's coming up. Okay. All right. They've got something that they're going to tell you, and Jazz is going to get uh, probably back over here behind the camera because they're going to do this uh, one at a time and tell you something. Uh, you want to go first? Okay, ladies first. Ladies first. She's the chairperson, so she's going to tell it. All right. Okay. The seminar is called... Tell your name. Yes. All right. The seminar is called Avenue of Hopes, and we know that once people are incarcerated, that they have major problems coming out, getting jobs, transportation, housing, anything that we have. We take it for granted, but once you have been incarcerated, it's very hard to do. So on October the 15th at the Marriott uh, on Airport, we will have a seminar from 8.30 to three o'clock and some of the people that will be there will be u.s attorney kenan brown chief barber um teresa bettis who is the executive director of uh, the center for fair housing and ann brown who is director of legal services we know that this is very important for people to come out and participate we have so many people who once they leave prison whatever they can't find anything. So we are hoping that this seminar will provide, as we're calling it, avenues of hope. Great. And um, so the other thing that um, I do a lot of research dealing with the criminal justice system, and one of the things that we call it is, uh, that I call it, is the second sentencing. People do a crime, then they go and do their time. That's the first sentencing. And then when they come out, you would expect them to be allowed to come back into our society and get a job and get housing and go on with things. But that's not what happens. We, uh, we put them through a second sentencing where they're kind of marked for life with the mark of a criminal record, and this stops them from getting housing. It stops them from getting jobs. And so what we're trying to do is put together a reentry seminar, Avenues of Hope, so that people can become more aware of what issues these people face when they come out of jails and prisons so that we can start putting together uh, some community-based efforts to help them with legal services, housing services, um, uh, career services, and all, uh, transportation issues, um, uh, you know, voting rights, you know, and things like that. And at the seminar, we're going to feature the luncheon speaker is a person, uh, Carrie Pruitt, 
who is the executive director of the Dannon Project in Birmingham, Alabama, and she and her organization have been doing a warehousing of services for people coming out of jails and prisons for over 15 years. So they have a strong model in Alabama of what we can try to follow and set up here in Mobile. Uh, we're going to call ours uh, neighborhood, house. neighborhood House. Neighborhood House. And uh, we're going to try it. And so she's going to come down and speak and share with us her experience, Strength and Hope. And then we have other people who are coming who have criminal records who are going to be sharing about the successes because they've been out longer than three years and they've been able to make a way. Uh, in our in Mobile, and then we have some people who are coming to share about their struggles because they're under three years. Within three years, most 67% of people go back to prison. So if you can come out and stay out past three years, then you're golden. And what we're trying to do is set up a community-based organization and efforts so that we can help them stay out and get golden. And so we're going to have people coming and sharing their stories with us on this day. The organization that we are talking about is Mobile Area interfaith conference and it's for anyone who can participate and want to participate in the seminar one of the things uh, we'll just give an example we have a young man who has been trying to find housing his uh, parole officer said unless he found housing he would go back to jail but because of the felony he was not able to find housing they picked him up and he had to go back to jail what? yes so he had family members that were was willing to help him. He had a whole um, community, but because he could not find housing, and they would not let him stay with a family member. Okay. Um, okay, something laid on my heart. If there's somebody that um, own a big house, like a rooming house or something, I'm going to need you to call these people. Can't, can't they... Can't the housing be a rooming house? They can stay in a rooming house. Right. So uh, maybe someone that got a rooming house, uh, if this touched your heart, uh, this may be a way to go. Now, we're, they're not talking about uh, people that's there for rape and stuff like this. Yeah. We're talking about people that just got caught up. And, and you can be innocent and go to jail, you know. And, 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 and you can be innocent and got arrested. Y'all seen Jazz Red had to get locked up. I had to be in the holding cell because someone called the police first. They hit me, but they called the police and I hit them. So that's another long story, but y'all know it was not guilty because Jazz don't don't fight like that. I don't I don't like stuff like that. But it's whoever called the police first in uh in in certain situations, and uh, and the criminals know that. So the people that's doing wrong, but we talking about people that that serve their time and they want to get they get out and they can't find a job. Okay, I own a business. I own a limo, sir. I can't hire people with felonies uh, to drive my limo, whether they be my, my kids or whatever. I can't hire them. So it's a lot of things. Uh, yeah, that, that need to be looked at. Uh, when is that seminar anyway? Yes, uh, the seminar is going to be from uh, on October 15th. Mm -hmm. We start registration at 730. It'll be from 830 until 3. We actually show a film around 230, 3 o'clock, so it can go until 4 o'clock so we can have a Q&A afterwards. But um, that's a pretty much all day uh, seminar that we're having. One of the things on the film, gravity, pull of gravity, yeah, it right. talks about how when people have been incarcerated, how they take on the behavior of the other criminals because they come out, they go back, and they can't get anything. So what I say is if people realize that there is no life out here, they're going to try to make a life. So we cause more problems than the people who come out and try to get help. That's, uh, it seems like it's, uh, it's promoting them to do crime. You right. get out, mm -hmm. you've done your time, you can't get a job. I was at the shipyard in the employment office pick, trying to pick up some applications. At that time, they were giving out applications. He said, they won't hire me because I got a felony. He said, i done my time. i paid my due. I can't get a job. Well, Ingalls hire you now. Uh, with felonies. They wasn't at that time. So you can come to an uh, English ship bill and be sure to tell them that they have to go and build a profile and get online with Ingles. Ingles will hire you. But I'm saying if they've done some white collar crime, they got an office job or something, that means they just out. Yeah. Certain jobs won't hire them with felonies. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, 
a criminal record can get in the way of uh, housing. It can get in the uh, way of uh, job discrimination. Um, and we don't see this as, as, as uh, formal discrimination yet because it's not a protected category. So this is really a community effort that needs to start coming together to start helping these people out, especially those who have been uh, in the nonviolent drug offending category because often they just need treatment. Um, and, and drug dealer, and, and if they, isn't that something? Um, you uh, drug dealer, um, they don't want to give you a job. You get out, you got a felony, you can't get a job. Yeah. So yeah, the felony is just is not working. But some of them can be expunged. Yeah. Some of them after you, sure. you can't get them off your record. But we've got to do something about this. Yeah. One of the things, and for everybody who work in communities, you know that people are treated differently. Certain people who go into jail stay seven, eight months, or a year, come right out of jail because of their connections, walk right into a job. Other people, probably three months, but because they don't have the same connection, can never get a job. So what we're saying is just give everybody an even chance. That's right. That's exactly, right. an opportunity. Um, we want to, exactly, that's what I was thinking. We have a, a website where you can f look up information about our organization. It's www.mobile, M O B I L E, interfaith, I N T E R F A I T H dot org. www.mobileinterfaith.org. We're just so excited to be a to have this opportunity to talk about why we should do something, why we should help our fellow men. Because if we don't do it, who will? That's right. That's right. Uh, the phone number is uh, running across the screen. Uh, uh, give that number out one more time. Yes, www.mobile, M O B I L E, interfaith, I N T E R. F A I T H dot O R G dot org. Okay, it's a website. So every website is running across the screen. Uh, you call them and uh, let's go to that seminar and see if we can work some things out because we don't want our babies to stay in prison. You know, feel they got to be incarcerated when they're in there and then when they're in out, they got to go back. We don't want the young men in jail. We don't want the older men in jail. All the ladies, we want to help them out. Uh, okay, I want y'all to tell them God bless you. Oh, yeah. Um, one, one last thing, um, and that is that this is a generational thing. So not only are we trying to help out the current generation, but their children of the incarcerated and their children's children. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. I want to say if there is a need right now, we need to be about helping our fellow man. And I thank you so much, Jazzy Red, for bringing us on. And God bless each and every one of you. We are finna have an interview with Fry Daddy, uh, always in the community doing something. And there goes Santa Claus in the way. Get out the way, Santa Claus. Santa Claus in the way. We finna do an interview with uh, Mr. Fry Daddy in one minute. Jazzy Red talk show, and he got his head turned around. See how they do me? They don't do five and ten like that, ladies and gentlemen. We, gonna, uh, we got an important dignitary here. He going to tell you his name and what he do. This is Don Hunter, Fry Daddy. Come here to represent the Bike Angels. Uh, it was a lovely time. Uh, Lorenzo Martin gave away a lot of bikes and you know, a good deed for the community. Okay, tell them about your business. Uh, Fry Daddy, we are located at 2022 St. Stephen's Road. Uh, considered the best wings on the planet. Uh, come out and see us. Come support your people. We got phone number. 251 456 5858. That's too far. Okay. All right, don't move. Okay. Let me tell you about this. Okay. All right, my viewers know I don't lie. This man has always been supportive in everything he do. Anybody giving anything, Fry Daddy is there. He's here today with the bike giveaway. Tell him, uh, God bless. <laughs> he said, God. Yeah, God bless y'all.